There's one thing I always tell people when they ask me what kind of car they should get. You probably should get a hatchback. Especially if, say, you're a young person, maybe aged 16 to 30, a hatchback is always going to be really, really useful for carrying your friends or pets or mountain bike or boxes to move into an apartment. If you're shopping in the compact car space, a compact hatchback is always going to be more usable and more practical than an equivalent sedan. Which is part of why I'm so happy that Honda is once again selling a Civic hatchback in the United States. It brings a ton more versatility and cargo carrying capacity to the compact car segment. And like every version of the newest Civic, it's supremely easy to live with every single day. How does it look? The hatchback is the best looking version of the new Honda Civic. Its rear end isn't quite so bulbous and high-waisted as the coupe and sedan. This one in particular looks killer. It's the sport touring model, so it gets larger wheels, a new body kit, and an eye-catching, if totally impractical, center exit exhaust. Of course, all those add-ons do make it look a little bit busy with two spoilers and lots of different vents and so on. But if you get the tamer versions of the Civic hatchback, it's just a really attractive car that brings a welcome injection of style to the generally pretty boring compact hatchback class. How's the storage? With 26 cubic feet, the Civic has way more cargo space than all of its competitors, more room than in a Golf, a Mazda 3, or a Chevy Cruze hatchback. Though I have to point out in fairness that if you get the sport trim level like this one, there's a little less storage space because the trunk floor is higher to clear that center exit exhaust. Now it's a pretty wide, deep trunk, although one criticism I have is this really cool sloping rear window it means you can't stack things up as high as you might in a traditional hatchback design. But something I love, on the other hand, is this sliding cargo cover. It makes it super easy to remove the cover when you want to fold down the back seats and fit bulky objects inside. Once this cargo cover is out of the way and stowed in the side of the trunk, it's really easy to fold down the back seats and you get a lot of open space in the back of this hatchback. In fact, there's so much space we should have no issue fitting in our new suitcases from away. There's so much storage inside the cabin, you might lose stuff in here for days. The reconfigurable center console is huge and has tons of useful arrangements, and the space below the center stack and below the console for storing smaller items like phones or wallets. Is it roomy? Honda does a great job of making even its smallest cars feel really spacious inside. With plenty of room and seat adjustability, it's easy for me to get comfortable and into a good driving position up front. The back seat is good too for this class of car, though of course being a compact, legroom and headroom are still a little on the conservative side. How does the interior feel? As is the case with all affordable cars in this segment, everything is pretty much made of plastic, but Honda's made sure that all the things that you touch and interact with feel really nice. There's a lot of soft materials in here, and everything is really well put together. I'd have no worries that this car was going to shake itself apart over the years I owned it. There's two small things I don't like in the interior. The first is that these little gaps on either side of the touchscreen don't quite match, and that's something I've seen in every Civic I've driven. And also, I find that using the USB port that's mounted down here is a little fiddly when you have to thread the cable down through here. But overall, really nice interior that's a lovely place to spend time. Is it well equipped? It's incredible how many features that used to only be offered on luxury cars have trickled down to the Civic. This one, for instance, has lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, and pre-collision braking, as well as things like heated rear seats, remote start, and so on. You can also equip your Civic with navigation and LED lights, and like most Hondas, it even has the neat LaneWatch blind spot camera on the passenger side of the car. How's the infotainment system? This seven inch touchscreen isn't my favorite, but it does everything pretty well. The optional built-in navigation system uses Garmin software that you'll recognize from that device you suction cup to your windshield, and it's not bad at all. There's also support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the front USB port has 1.5 amp charging to juice up your phone a little quicker. I still don't like this touch-sensitive sliding volume control you find in a lot of Hondas, but the steering wheel mounted volume buttons work great instead. Is it a good daily driver?
The Honda Civic had made a name for itself all those years ago by being supremely just pleasant in every single driving situation. And this version is no different. Everywhere I've driven it over the past few days, on busy highway traffic or downtowns or anything like that, it just works. Um, some things specifically, great visibility in every direction. I can see exactly where the front of the car is and what's around me. Although I will say, because of that really sloping rear window, the C pillars are a little bit thick. So when I'm looking over my shoulder into my blind spot, sometimes I can't see quite as much as I'd want. The steering is great. The ride quality is really impressive, especially considering that we've got 18 inch wheels on this sport touring trim level. You'd expect that would mean it would crash and bang a little bit over potholes, but it's really not too bad. I also think what's really impressive is how little wind noise there is on the highway. A lot of compact cars in this class, they can't really keep you from hearing the wind rushing past you at 75 miles an hour, but the Civic does a great job. This is the 1.5 litre turbo engine, which is available in a lot of Civic variants, and it works great. There's no real turbo lag to speak of, you wouldn't know that it's a turbo engine. It's a pretty good match for this continuously variable transmission, which, although it's not my favourite type of transmission, in this application is pretty quiet and trouble free. Is it fun to drive? With compact cars, sometimes it's difficult for them to be fun to drive. My benchmark in this segment has always been the Mazda 3 hatchback, but the Civic puts up a really, really strong fight. This version specifically being the sport touring model has the 18 inch wheels with wider tires and a slightly different steering ratio than other Civics. Uh, the turbo engine has 180 horsepower, so it's really pretty quick for what we expect out of compact cars. But I really wish I could get the six-speed manual transmission that's available on some Civic trim levels, even on this fully loaded Sport Touring. The CVT is perfectly fine in everyday driving, but when you're trying to drive quickly, it's just kind of a drag. How's the fuel economy? Every version of the Civic Hatchback is extremely fuel efficient. With the CVT, you average 31 miles per gallon city and an impressive 40 mpg highway. Now the Sport and Sport Touring models are only rated 30 and 36 mpg, but that's still really good for this class. I averaged 30 mpg in this car this week, which I'd say is great considering it's winter and I left the car idling with remote start many cold mornings. How much is it? You can get a Civic hatchback from as little as $20,000 if you want the stripped out LX trim, while this, the most expensive version, is just a smidge over 29 grand. A very nicely equipped EX with Honda sensing trim level, which is probably a good choice for most shoppers, starts just under 25000 What are the negatives? I really don't have a lot of complaints about the new Civic hatchback. As I pointed out before, that really cool sloping roofline kind of cuts into your cargo space. And if it were me, I really wish I could get a manual transmission on this fully loaded Sport Touring model, as well as on the base LX and Sport trims. And yeah, it'd be nice to have a real volume knob. But these are nitpicks. This is a great car and we have very little to complain about. Who should buy it? As I said at the start, the Civic Hatchback is perfect for everyone. If you're looking for a compact car that's practical, gets good gas mileage, and is affordable, this is the one to have. The compact car space is really competitive, and there's no other car I've driven that does everything as well as the Civic Hatchback does. Hey guys, if you liked this YBI, be sure to click the like button or scroll down and leave a comment about this or any questions you have about any of our other YBI subjects. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get every new YBI. We've got a new one for you every single Thursday. And of course, you can keep up with us on all your favorite social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find us at motorone.com.